All right, guys, welcome to the notes on balancing equations. Let's go ahead and get started. I wanna remind you as you're writing down the essential question that you can always pause this video if you need to take some more time to write things down. And I recommend scrubbing backwards if you ever need to revisit something. How do we use coefficients to obey the law of conservation of mass? That's our essential question for these notes. The law of conservation of mass states, atoms are neither created or destroyed in a chemical reaction, only rearranged. We talked about chemical chemical changes and how a chemical change is just when two particles, when they change, they come together, they rearrange themselves and form something new. Now here we have our reactants. Here we have hydrogen, two hydrogen molecules and, and one oxygen molecule. Now when those react, they create two water molecules. And notice that each side has the same numbers of particles. So that's basically it. The mass or the numbers of atoms in a reaction must equal the mass or the numbers of atoms in the product. Now we could weigh out all these particles. We could weigh out all of the hydrogens together. We look up their molar mass, we look up their molar masses on the periodic table, and we can add those to the molar masses of the two oxygen. And then those should equal the total molar masses of the product. Or we can just count the particles. Both of them are going to lead to the same exact thing, the law of conservation of mass. Balancing chemical equations is something we need to know how to do. It's not usually done for us when we write word formulas. For example, the word formula below, magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. That problem doesn't really tell us anything about how much magnesium and how much hydrochloric acid we react and how much magnesium chloride or how much hydrogen we get. We have to fix them by adding coefficients. We have to realize that the law of conservation of mass must be true. So how do we do that? Well, before we do that, we're going to do something called balancing a reaction. Now, before we balance, I want to give you a tip. Make sure your compound formulas are written correctly. You cannot balance a reaction unless you know that each of the compounds, ionic, covalent, uh, polyatomics, uh, anything that is a diatomic, all those things have to be correctly written before you balance. Because if you don't, then things aren't going to work out that well. Now, while you're balancing here, a few tips. We'll see a few of these as we go along, but only change coefficients. Don't change the subscripts because we just spent time fixing all of our equations. Don't change those. We're only going to touch the coefficients when we balance. If we see elements in multiple spots, we're going to save those for later. Now, remember, sometimes things might become unbalanced as we're balancing other things. That's okay. Just keep going. Things will eventually work out. Finally, if you see polyatomic ions, treat them as a single unit, and I'll mention these as we go. So here's our first practice. We have magnesium and hydrochloric acid makes magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Now, if you were to actually count out all of the particles in the reactant side, there's only one magnesium, one hydrogen, and one chlorine. But in the product side, there's one magnesium, great, but there's two hydrogens and two chlorines. This is not a balanced reaction, and we need to balance it by adding coefficients. Now, I am not going to change any of these subscripts. These are set in stone because I wrote those formulas. They're super, super important, and I shouldn't change them. What I am going to change, however, is these underlying spots. Those are the coefficients. Those are the numbers that tell us the, the, the amount of moles or the amount of substances that we have. So I'm looking here. I'm just going to start left to right. I see magnesium is balanced, so I don't need to worry about that. But my hydrogen is not, so I'm going to focus on just balancing the hydrogen. I'm going to put a 2 in front of here because that multiplies this whole equation by 2. So now I have two hydrogens on the left side and two hydrogens on the right side. But hey, look, by balancing this reaction, my chlorine also became balanced. So this is how I deal with the law of conservation of mass and balancing a reaction. Now, the other reactants or the other reactants and the other products all have coefficients as well. They're not zero, they're all one. We just don't write those ones because it's implied by the fact that if they are there, there's at least one of them. So usually we leave those blank. All right, for this practice, I recommend that you pause the video and try it yourself. Now, you're going to have to write the formulas correctly first and then balance the reaction afterwards. So pause the video right now, see if you can try it without me telling you, and then I'll go ahead and you can check your answers. Did you pause the video? I hope you did. Let's go ahead and get started with this one. So zinc 2 sulfide and oxygen gas react to form zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide. These are the correctly written formulas. They're not balanced yet, 
but these are the correctly written formulas. Make sure you know that why these are all correct if you get any of them wrong. For example, zinc 2 sulfide, you might need to learn a little bit more about transition metals and why they have this charge designation in the Roman numerals. Why is oxygen a 2? You need to go look at diatomic particles again to understand that. Zinc oxide, right? How, why is there only one of each? And why is there only one of each of zinc sulfide? Make sure you know that. And then sulfur dioxide, this has a, uh, a covalent compound in there. So you need to know how to deal with those mono di tri prefixes. All right, let's go ahead and check to see if balancing is done correctly. On the left-hand side in the reactants, I see that there are one zinc, one sulfur, and two oxygens. On the right-hand side, there's one zinc, one sulfur, and three oxygens. Okay, so everything's not doing so well. Now, normally, I would save oxygen to the very end because uh, there's multiple oxygens found on the right side in different spots. But since oxygen is the only thing out of balance, I have to start with it. So let's go ahead. If I see here, there's three oxygens on the right and two oxygens on the left. Now... It's not really easy to get these into the same spot if they're even an odd number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my oxygen on the right first. Since there's two sets, I'm going to focus on the one that is singular. Now notice that this oxygen, there are two of them. But there's only one oxygen over here. Now I want to fix that one oxygen first because it's hard to match up things that are odd. So to do that, I'm going to times this one by two. That changes that oxygen to be a four because there's two oxygens here plus two oxygens there, so I got four. But it also changes my zinc. It makes it so I have two of those. So now I need to go back and fix my zincs. Sometimes when you balance things, un some things become unbalanced. So I'm going to put a two in front of the zinc over here, uh, which also so happens to change my sulfur. Again, sometimes when you balance things, um, other things become unbalanced. So I gotta go change the sulfur over here, which changes my oxygens and my sulfur. So now I have six oxygens, but that's okay because my oxygens are still an even number. I can easily change my original oxygen in my reactant to a six just by multiplying it by three. So now I have a balanced, completed and balanced reaction. Let's hit home with one more practice. See if you can do this one. This time I gave you the formulas instead of giving you the names. So that makes it a little bit easier. But before I tell you to just do this, go ahead and I want to remind you that if you see polyatomic ions, treat them as one unit instead of breaking them apart. Pause the video right now and see if you can figure this one out by yourself. All right, I hope you paused it. Uh, if not, um, I really recommend that you do. But let's go ahead and get started and try to figure this one out. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and just account for what we have. On the reactant side, we have one sodium, one chlorine, one copper, and then again, two nitrates. I'm treating nitrate like a unit instead of breaking it apart. On the product side, I have one sodium, two chlorines, one copper, and one nitrate. So we're not quite balanced with our chlorines and nitrates. So I'm going to start from left to right. So sodiums are good. Let's fix these chlorines. I'm going to put two in front of the sodium chloride. Now that's going to screw up my sodiums, but it's going to fix my chlorines. So i got to go fix our sodiums. So let's go fix the sodiums on the right-hand side. That's that fixes our sodiums, and hey, it actually fixed our nitrates too. Remember, this two foils into both sodium and that entire nitrate, so I have two whole sets of nitrate, which is what I needed, so we went ahead and did that. All right, these are the end of the notes. I really recommend that you go trying and doing the practice problems on the adjacent page, but I'm going to tell you to do one more thing. As an extra practice, I really recommend going backwards and trying to find this chemical equations practice. Now, you wrote the word equations and the formula equations, but you didn't balance these reactions. So I really recommend you spend some time going and back balancing those reactions. Now, the key for this will be posted in these notes so you can check them, but go back and balance those as well as doing the other practice. Good luck, guys.